name's Gordon from Drayson Design. And I'm Taylor from The Creative Tinker. And welcome to This Week with Taylor and Gordon, a weekly podcast and vidcast where we talk about things that have affected our businesses over the last seven days. And it's been a bit longer than seven days because we didn't manage to do an episode while I was away over the last three weeks. No, but hopefully we should be, you know, we said we wanted to come back and then we were going to be doing regular and then you went away. So hopefully we've got no trips that should interrupt uh, our, our schedule. Well, not for a little while. Yeah. You're off somewhere soon, but it shouldn't. Only for so. a couple of days anyway. Perfect. There so. we go. Uh, so let's get straight into it without wasting any time. So what did you do while you were away? Ah, oh, shall, I, shall I tell you about it? Yeah. So um, I went to Blackpool. I got the train to Blackpool and Blackpool is a big magic convention in February. Best time to go to February to Blackpool because it's nice and warm. Well, well, for people that aren't from the UK, Blackpool is a town, a seaside town in the north of England. It's not a convention. It, it, it's uh, very cold, very windy. Yeah. And I think they get it cheap in February. That's why they yeah. do the magic convention in yeah. February. But they have about 4,000 magicians who turn up to an event for three days. Um, you get about... I don't know, two hours sleep a night, if that. It's quite lucky, that is. Um, yeah, it's, some it's not a lot. They've got lots of um, magicians who just sit around showing each other tricks. We've got people who've come over to lecture. We have shows in the big opera house theatre. Uh, it's very full on. It's a big event. It is a big event. You've actually been, haven't you? I've been, yeah, I've been quite a few times. Yeah, and um, yeah, not a lot of sleep. Too much um, drink. Um, cause a lot of the showing other magicians tricks is done in a bar of some sort. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, very tiring. So of course I planned to get the train, uh, at 7.55 in the morning on the Monday, as soon as the event finished on the Sunday night. And I got a train to Manchester airport and flew to Vegas by, uh, I was on the plane by midday on the Monday. And sort of 22 hours later, I'm in Las Vegas and uh, I'm seeing my friend there who's working at an exhibition, which I'm sort of helping at, just sort of standing around, really. But on my feet for like three days, just... After you've already done three days of on your feet. Yeah, and no sleep and nearly 24 hours of travel. Yeah, I was... I was quite tired, I have to say. It was it was a very tiring time, but um, very good as well because we, we we did lots of lots of meals out, which was lovely. Uh, American meals are huge. Yeah, the portion um, sizes are completely different. I've had three weeks now of eating American sized meals, as well as going to Starbucks at least once a day. Sometimes, not as many as last time, but sometimes more than once a day. And, and your order? What's your... Ah, uh, well, it's it's sort of hot chocolate in the morning, but I found that was making me fall asleep, <laughs> so I changed it to a, a refresher drink. A pink drink, as you call it. It's, it's what they call it. It's not what I call it. Okay. It's not my name. Do you know what's in it? Um, strawberries. Okay. And milk and lemonade, and it's really quite nice, actually. Do they have it over here? I don't know. I don't go to Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> Next time you go, you have a look I'll for have a me. Look, I'll have a look. Yeah, that'd be good to know. Um, so yes, I was in Las Vegas for uh, about three, four days. I think I was there Monday till Friday, and then I flew from there to. It's five days. Uh, Monday to Friday. Well, I landed. I landed sort of Tuesday. I okay. I got there Monday. I left on Monday. Left the UK on Monday. Got there for Tuesday. So I was in Vegas, but the time zones are all funny. So I think I got there late Monday night, in fact. But and Tuesday, then I was there Tuesday on the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then we left on the Friday. So three, okay. four days, yeah, it's something like that. And I flew to Texas. Um, in actual fact, I flew to Austin, which is in Texas. And that's where my friend Mark lives. And he's got his factory there. And so I had a weekend of sleeping it wasn't sleeping we did loads of things uh we did escape rooms yeah yeah we did i, I did five escape rooms while i was over there and you managed to escape uh, all in the same place uh five different rooms though you managed, to escape. Uh, managed to escape all of them however um the most difficult one 
Uh, it was called Seven Deadly Sins, and there was just the two of us, me and Mark, and it was a very tricky room to do. Uh, but we did manage to get out with one minute 24 left on the clock. Cutting it very close then. Very close, yeah. And they had a Star Trek one as well, which we struggled with, but we, we did manage to get out of it. Is that, is that Star Trek, Spock? Yeah, that's Spock, yeah. So if you can't see, I was very doing good. The, the Spock thing. I don't, he was doing the V-sign. I don't, I don't watch Star Trek, but that's the only thing I know. <laughs> From the original series, yeah. Um, uh, so, yes, uh, in Austin... Um, I went to Mark's factory and I got to see all of his new machines, the printing and the cutting machines. Uh, he's got a bejazzle uh, type machine that, that allows you to do sort of sequins on, on, on fabric and t-shirts. Um, uh, I, I had a, a special t-shirt made for someone special in my life. Um, that was you, actually, wasn't yeah, it? That yeah, was nice of you. Yeah, and what does it say? Because some people will probably have seen uh, the film that you don't know. I don't, I don't know what the film. So is. the film is called Sixth Sense. It was. It's a we, great film. We Dev People. Or it's something? I see oh. Dev People as in development people, but uh, the, the. I don't the, get it. Yeah, you're gonna have to watch the film Sixth I Sense. Won't. I won't. Yeah, it's it's a boy who sees dead people. He says, okay. "I see dead people." You see, so the, the joke is, right. it's, I see dev people, you see, okay. which sounds like dead, but it's more to do with uh, website development. And then got it's it. got his logo underneath just because yeah. it's a, a customised T-shirt for him. OK. Um, so that was that. And um, all of the machines are named after characters. Yeah, they've all got different characters depending on the job they do, the job they do or the sound they make. So there's a there's a machine that is a UV ink printer so it prints on flat surfaces basically with uv ink uh, which then has a uv light that goes over it which cures it so it's effectively dry as soon as it comes out of the yeah. uv it's a bit like if you ever have your nails um painted they have uv lamps to to cure the gel yeah, you're an expert in that are you? well not really i've been twice now uh, one was in um las vegas last time i went in november and one was in um, Texas last like a week ago, um, yeah. but Mark has his yeah. They they they're wearing off. But they, they they're all sparkly. They were the sparkly. They're, they're not so much now. Um, but Mark has sort of the gel painted on, and he he sort of has one done while the other one's in the UV thing, and then he swaps them over. Probably moves it. It's probably easier. Yeah, probably. Um, but it, it makes sure that they're dry instantly. And so this printer that he's got. Uh, has a, a an up and down arrow button so you can put it at the right level mm -hmm. and as it goes down it goes hee haw hee haw hee it, it it gets to its limit yeah and that sounds just like the car that mark had when he was a clown he used to have a little clown car which yeah. you may have remember actually um and his uh, clown name was pancake so this machine is called pancake because it sounds like his car does he also have one that's an octopus because it's uh, uh, not not octopus. One ink, yeah, uh, squirts ink. Squid. Yes, a squid. Uh, yes, uh, and I'm what trying it? to think of the name of it. It's a Disney character, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I can't or think of the name character. of it, but yes, it, it it squirts ink everywhere um, when it shouldn't do. There's a computer in the uh, shipping room called Postman Pat. There is indeed because he posts stuff. Like, yeah, like our products and stuff. And I don't actually know why some of the machines have got the names they have, but. Um, They've all got their own little signs above them, and they're known by their name, not by their model and make, which is which is quite nice. Cause it's, they, easier, it's easier to remember and easier yeah. to, and fun and more fun, I guess. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, so he showed me around the workshop, and I got to see all the machines. And I was there for two weeks, just sort of looking around. And we did a few things on his website for him. Mm -hmm. um, Taylor helped, so we worked sort of. Um, on various bits and pieces, I say worked, we sort of helped out with Mark on bits and pieces um, while I was over there and Taylor was in the UK because he's still recovering so he was supposed to come on this trip I was, but you're still recovering from your operation so uh, he didn't um, but it meant that uh, I was sort of doing a, a Zoom chat it wasn't Zoom, it was FaceTime wasn't yeah. it, uh, with you while you were here 
And what time did you start here? So I, I was doing 3 p.m. to 11 p.m., which is obviously 9 to 5. It was 9 to 5 for us. It was the time we were in the office. So I had quite a lot of long day. I think my longest one was, I think, 16 hours, which was something like 7 a.m. till, oh, goodness, like 11 p.m. So because... that was when you went to, to your networking meeting. Yeah, I was kind of, yeah, because I was kind of having to do my own work, my own business work you know, up until 3 p.m. pretty much. And so sometimes I had to kind of wake up earlier to make sure I had enough time to do that. And then I was, I was you know, working yeah. in the evening, so I didn't have, you know, that time that I would normally. Yeah. But we managed to do lots of nice things for Mark. We yeah. managed to get a few websites up and running, some landing yeah. pages, um, a personal site for him, um, yeah, lots uh, of various stuff other bits and pieces, some processes in place. Automations. Yeah. So um, uh, all in all... I've come back having drunk way too much, not alcohol, but I did have alcohol, in fact. Uh, in, in, one, of my, uh, one of my new experiences while I was over there was going to a piano bar. What, do they have a piano? Yeah, so there's a lady who's got a piano here, and there's a bar over here, and the waitresses come over and ask you what you want to drink, and you sit, sit on a bar that's surrounding the piano, you know, just listening, and you can write down your suggestions, or you can Venmo... Uh, in some money to the pianist, and it appears on her phone, and then Very she'll cool. she'll play and sing, and it's it was really nice. I'd did, not did not they play it chopsticks. I know it was oh. very much better than that, much better than that. Um, and uh, I enjoyed it so much. I suggested we go the following day, so we went two days running. Um, but aside from the alcohol and the piano bar, uh, I did have way too much to drink as far as Starbucks goes, and uh, lots of food. F- Fizzy drinks. They had some really so one of the flavors I really like when I go to the cinema or Five Guys when they have the Coke mix machine, which is a big red machine. It's 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 Fountain not machine. very common, but it's 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 getting more common. Is they do a um, cherry vanilla Coke, and you can you can have that flavor. And it, I just love it. It's great. Yeah. And in America, you can buy bottles from the um, the the, the not the supermarket the Convenience service store. station yeah yeah uh, of cherry vanilla coke and it's like ah oh, it's amazing yeah. and they do cream soda dr pepper which yeah. is great i really enjoyed that they do a cherry dr pepper all these flavors we don't get in the uk which i wish we did so- soda is very very cheap over in america which is why you can get you know 48 ounce kind of drinks from uh like 7-eleven for example for like a dollar fifty or something it's very very cheap and then a free refill yeah they, like, they have um on the it's 7th of november or 11th of the 7th whichever one it is which is they have a 7-eleven day and they basically allow you to bring any container any size that you want so you could bring a recycling bin and you can fill it up to the brim and you pay like one price and you can just fill it up madness um, it's yeah it's crazy but they... so that's the drinks and then the portions of food are enormous as well um yeah. i i was <laughs> i got to the end of my sort of my my second week in uh, in in texas and i was ordering like kids meal portions because they were more the size that i'm used to and, yeah. and can eat so uh yeah i've eaten too much um that's why I'm wearing this jumper to cover everything up. But uh, <laughs> I might need to do some exercise. Uh, ha- having got back, however, um, I got back on Friday. Um, too late to do an episode, sadly. Um, and we, I went straight into my weekend, which had shows in it. So like, straight back into it. Um, I did have a little bit of sleep. And, and it was actually quite good for me because uh, one was local. The first one was local. And then the other one was in London somewhere, middle of London, Kensington. Oh, very posh. Yeah, six flights of stairs, four trips I had to do to get all of my equipment up. That that brought me back to this time zone and gave me a bit of exercise. I, yeah. I feel like that helped. <laughs> yeah. Good. So, yeah, I had a great trip. As far as um, technology goes, um, there were lots of new things I haven't seen over there. Um, uh, Mark is... A control four 
uh, consultant and fitter. So Control 4 is like a, an automation system for your house or your office. A bit like home Or kit. building. And Alexa yeah, and things, but, but on a much bigger yeah, scale. Well, on, on a bigger connected system. So yeah. rather than having one brand for your lights, one brand for thing, it's everything under one. Yeah, and, and it's sort of, you can have uh, like a server uh, with your Apple TV, your your cable box, your um, DVD, Blu-ray, whatever boxes all together, and you can route the signal to any TV in the house just using, you know, a button on the, on the wall if you've programmed it, or a Control 4 consultant has programmed it, yeah. uh, or on the app. You get an app that you can use and you can just do it, and you can... You can send music to different speakers in the rooms and, and yeah. it, it, it allows all sorts of automation. Like when you get home, turn the lights on in the in the garage, in the hallway, in the kitchen so you can walk through, turn the TV on to a particular channel, yeah. show something you've been recording. You know, all of that can be done just by turning up to the house because the, the phone that you've got knows you're now there or there's a sensor that sees that you're in the house now. Um, so it's a huge system, um, and uh, so yeah, seeing that was 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 very interesting. Um, taking my laptop was very useful to me because uh, I had some of the apps that I use on a daily basis available to me. Um, I didn't have Photoshop; that's not on one of, on on my machine. That's on my main machine, um, but uh, I sort of managed without that. Uh, I managed to do it everything I needed to do with pretty much all the other apps I had or I asked someone else in the office to uh, uh, to, to, to do something for me if yeah. you know they had they had uh, design they have a graphic design in-house um, designer. Yeah, a designer yeah um, the other thing that was was new for me was working not working being part of a team of people um, and you know when you when you work on your own as a magician in my case or as a a web designer or print designer, you, you're normally working on your own. Um, it's very rare that you get to collaborate with other people. And so working sort of every day, being within this environment where you've got six or seven, eight different people who are also in that space doing their own jobs and so on, um, was, was something unusual for me it's and, not and and certain processes to follow that weren't put in place by us but put in place by someone else um so we had the what what i did today yeah so that was something that i quite liked um mark has all of his staff wherever they are because some of them are remote staff they work from home in different countries um he has them all use slack for a start which um, we were sort of invited into keeps communications in one place in one place yeah and and trackable so you can look back on them um, but there's a what did I do today um, channel. channel which everyone has to fill in before they leave they leave for home and uh, it's it's basically to allow Mark to see what's going on within his company how quickly or slowly things are being done and it allows him to then plan for the future and he knows how long to leave for things or when to schedule things in. Um, he can see if processes are not being followed. He can see if there's processes that are needed because maybe something's gone off the rails. Um, we had a, a couple of incidents where um, items didn't get printed because they got assigned to the wrong people and didn't get printed. Therefore, they didn't get cut. Therefore, they didn't get sent out to the customer um in in a reasonable time and so new processes were put in place to stop that happening again um, and also a way to reflect so so there were three questions there was what did i do today there was i don't know four questions uh, what did i do today uh what was my wins what wins did i experience uh what, what were my hurdles yeah today and how did i overcome those hurdles and it's it's a good way because you can reflect on the mistakes you made and obviously consolidate the mistakes that you made and and you know it kind of yeah consolidates the however you solved it if you if you did solve it and obviously it's good for Mark to be able to see okay what what went wrong and why and why did it go wrong and how can we stop it going wrong again in the future and you know how what steps they took as well because it's also good 
to have initiative of okay this went wrong but i realized that and i reckon reconciled it is that the right word um to you know to to make sure that it didn't happen again um yeah get, like i said gives mark an overview of what's been going on um and also keeps you accountable well, yes, that's the other thing. You can't just sit around doing nothing all day because you'll have nothing to write in your what did I do today list. And and from, from reading, you know, everyone's, uh, you know, post each day, they they enjoy it, you know. They're, everyone's using emojis and, and things like that and it makes, it makes it fun. And, you know, you do look forward to showing how much you've got done and what, you, what you've been doing as well because you kind of, you know, when I was writing mine, it was, you know, oh, I, I integrated this system or I created this automation or... I finished this website and it's it's nice and other people can see that as well other people can see what i was working on going up to and so everyone else is also self-aware of what other people are doing so if you see someone's if you work in a similar area and someone says oh i've done this and you haven't seen them all day or whatever um you know you at least are, are up to date with what's what's been going on and you can come in the next day if you were off for example and be caught up to speed easily yeah so that pretty much wraps up my my trip to the US. Um, I've now got all of the things that I didn't do while I was over there to now catch up with. So that's going to probably uh, take a while. I've been doing some during this last week, um, but I've still got a few little things I need to sort out, which will take me into next week. Uh, and then sort of back to a bit of normality, really. Um, it's good though to, to see friends, catch up with them, keep in touch with them, even if they're not in the same country. Uh, and I, I really enjoyed spending time with Mark. I used to see him regularly uh, when he lived in the UK. And now you and, see him irregularly. And now I see him irregularly, but I see him for longer, in more, one go. more more controlled, not controlled. And you see him for a period of time in one go. Yes, exactly right. Um, so, I mean... I thought I would just give an update as well um, of where I've been and what I've been doing. Um, I've been here. I haven't gone anywhere. I was here ready to do, um, you know, our weekly episodes and didn't have anyone to do it with. So unfortunately, right. I couldn't go live. Um, so just before you get onto that, um, I, we should we should find out how you're feeling because um, you yeah. had that big operation. You are in your recovery period. How how are you feeling? Yeah, I mean, I think I've got. A lot of uh, I got a lot of energy. Um, my kind of life has, has been so much better. My kind of um, quality of life has been has been a lot better, um, and I feel like everything. A lot of things are under control, and it's 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 nice. It's nice to, you know, be in control of what I do, when I do it, where I do it, um, and how I do it. Um, you know, I haven't had that luxury for the past couple of years, just because of you know my situation, and. Um, I'm slowly coming down on my medication and things like that. So coming off um, things that have kind of make you feel better normally. Um, but hopefully, you know, they, they've been giving me energy and I've been eating a lot because of the side effects of them. But kind of I'm coming down off them slowly. And, you know, my, my energy levels have been really good and all of that. So, that, you know, it's been really positive, really. That's great news. That's good. So tell us what you've been up to. So I was on a live stream. So uh, Jonathan uh, or Permaslug um, had a live stream. Um, he does a podcast on a Friday at 9am and he uh, goes live and it's called Inside Link, uh, which we will link in, in the show notes. Um, and he has guests on and he invited me onto his live stream and we spoke about uh, blocks, um, specifically custom blocks with Block Studio. Now, this is a plugin that I use to create advanced functionality for sites um, when, you know, the block doesn't exist or the functionality doesn't exist, um, you know, in, in my normal, you know, my normal tech stack. Um, and so we kind of spoke about that. I showed off the custom things, I custom blocks I'd built. So I built a slider block, a modal slash pop up, um, kind of progress sliders, um, a map block. So putting a marker on a map. Um, of, you know, if you've got a company with a location, you know, addresses and offices, um, kind of showing like that. Um, and linked to that was uh, Block Vault, which is a new uh, product that I'm going to be bringing out. And it's essentially a library a collection of pre-made, pre-built, ready to, to import uh, blocks that 
re remove the need for multiple dependencies of external block libraries. So the kind of tech stack that I use is generate press and generate blocks. Now these provide you with the core foundation and building blocks to build websites. Um, it has a container, buttons, headlines, um, and things like that. And it, you can, you know, for the most part, build layouts. But if you want more functionality, maybe a, a slider or a, um, a modal, like I said, they don't cut, it is, you know, they don't exist in the generate blocks plugin. Um, and so you either have to install a third party like Cadence um, or other block uh, libraries, but they are, normally come with 10, 15, 20 plus blocks um, in the plugin. And, you know, you only ever need, you know, you mostly likely need like one or two, maybe up to five, but you've got all of these others. You can stop them from loading, which is, you know, good. But at the same time, it's a big dependency you have to have installed just for this one block that you want. You know, you just want a slider. You have to install the entire plugin uh, to, to, to have access to it. And the idea behind kind of block vault is giving you the ability to import only the blocks you want or need. Um, and so, you know, you've got um, pre-built blocks ready for you to, to go um, and you don't have to update it. You know, um, you know, my plan is to update the blocks in the future if there are new ideas come. So someone wants a control or be able to do something in the block, I can obviously update that. But they don't have to update their, you know, if someone's already imported the block, they don't have to update their version if they don't need it or want it. Um, and they only have to import the blocks that they need. So, yes, you do need the dependency of Block Studio but you're only importing the relevant blocks that you want or need. And you can also extend the blocks. So, you know, you, you can't extend these blocks from the plugin repository because you can't really edit the source code. Whereas you can take my block and import it, use it as a framework and actually go, actually, I want to extend the functionality of the, the base block that I built. And so, you know, it gives you a lot more flexibility, a lot more control, and yes, removes the dependency and, and the need to update you know your block that may end up breaking something and you know we don't want stuff breaking um in the future because you don't have control you know sometimes developers uh change the markup of html so css that you've written to style it to your website gets broken and obviously that that's annoying especially if you've used this block on multiple sites um so yeah that's that's kind of what we spoke about and i showed uh and it's something that i'm going to be bringing to snippet club um, as a separate product, but also anyone that is a Snippet Club member will have access to all of these blocks um, kind of included. That's very exciting. So now is a good time to join Snippet Club because the value is just going to get higher. And I'm assuming that if the value gets higher, the price will possibly go up as well. So yeah. now is a good time to get in. So, yeah, I mean, it's um, it's something that, you know, I had a lot of people interested and didn't want to subscribe to snippet club so offering it as a separate standalone product is something they can do um you know they, they don't have to to subscribe to the the snippet club membership very good so they can buy things piecemeal yeah exactly um and that is not launched yet but there is a link to uh, join the the launch subscription list if you're interested and i obviously will send you an email when i launch the, the product look for the show notes and you'll see the link in there for for that so that you can uh, find out when block vault gets launched yeah anything else you want to say i don't think so um you know i've been i've been working on snippet club in the background um releasing tutorials um and i've kind of i set myself a a goal of of creating two tutorials slash snippets a week um, that's something that I'm trying to trying to keep to, um, to you know, consistency and again accountability because it's it's very important to you know set yourself some sort of target or minimum target to to hit, um, you know, and also for members they you know they know that there's going to be kind of two ish you know minimum at least of tutorials a week, um, and yeah I've I've kind of just been getting back to it. It feels like I've kind of started my business from scratch in a way because a lot of processes that either didn't exist or did exist have changed because of my situation you know some of the automations i had and systems i had in place were set up around me having you know a certain level of 
energy and things like that. So obviously because that's changed, you know, I need to reevaluate that and kind of hopefully set up my business for, you know, the long term um, in a way that is scalable and maintainable um, and yeah, just helps me grow my business. Very good. Lots of exciting news today. Uh, thank you for joining us. As always, you can like, share and subscribe. We're on Facebook and on YouTube. You can also go to our website thisweekwith.co.uk to find all of our past episodes, the show notes and the transcriptions. We will be back, hopefully, assuming everything goes to plan and we have no reason to think that might not be the case, uh, next week at 1pm on Friday. That's when our podcast and vidcast get released. Um, so, uh, in fact, the podcast is slightly slightly later than that, but the vidcast goes out at 1pm. So uh, please join us then. Until then, my name is Gordon and I'm from Drayson Design. And I'm Taylor from The Creative Tinker. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you.